I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the Chill Spot. My name's Drake and this is Corinne. Good morning. Today we wanted to take some time. We're on here and we say we want your input. We want to answer any questions you have. We had one of our members reach out to us and they wanted some tips on how do you get a peer to actively listen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people may appear to be listening or they may just be hearing you, but they wondered, you know, how do you get them to listen with the purpose, I guess I could say. Right. So we wanted to give you some tips on listening skills if you are the listener and if you're the speaker, these are things you can look for in the listener to gauge whether they're actively listening or not. Exactly. The first one um, I would suggest is to make eye contact. Make sure that you are focused on that person and that, you know, you're not rolling your eyes mm -hmm. and all that, you know. Make sure that, you know, you're looking at them. Or if there's a mirror, like you're like checking out your bottom <laughs> or, or your hair or something. It's a no you know, fashion show when you're yeah, having a Yeah, make sure they have your undivided attention. And then remember um, like past details. Like if I'm, like you're talking to me about something mm -hmm. and I agree with it and I can make a comment, reach back to that person that's speaking to yes, you. Yes, yes. You know, and make that, make that comment. And then, of course, nod. Let them know that, you know, you're in agreement yeah, with them. Yeah, showing assurance, reassurance that you are listening. Right. And then paraphrasing and sum summarizing. I got it. <laughs> it's very too good communication skills. Yes. I feel, yes. you know, that is good to have, you know. Um, it lets the speaker know that you understand, you know, what's going on and everything and and um, it allows you to show them that, you know, you're engaged in what what you're speaking about at that moment. And paraphrasing, um, I actually looked up the word. <laughs> and it means rewording, um, expressing your own your own words. Yep. Which I kind of knew what it was, but I wanted to make sure it was the right um, definition mm -hmm. to what we were going to be, you know, talking about today. And then summarizing is just a brief statement. That, that one I have a hard time with because sometimes if I'm expressing myself, I'll just keep ad-libbing and ad-libbing and ad-libbing. Yeah, and yeah. That's kind of hard for me just like to get my point across and just stop. I, I, I practice that often, being direct, and sometimes maybe I'm too direct. But to listening skills, paraphrasing, that's a good thing after. So... Corinne, you were just talking... Just going to give an example. Corinne, you were just talking about listening skills. Mm -hmm. So you're saying... Making eye contact, watching your body language, asking mm -hmm. questions, and then summarizing at the end right. are the four top skills right. when you are looking at listening. Mm -hmm. So that was paraphrasing and summarizing in one. I do, I mean, I think those are four great skills. The body language, I can't stress that enough. I tend to mirror people's body language. And I didn't notice this until I was reading a book at the end of last year. Talking to somebody with their arms crossed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Crossing your arms is not a pouty thing. I strongly believe it's just a comfort thing for some people. But if I'm talking to someone that has their arms crossed, like so, I tend to have my arms crossed before the end of the conversation too. Hand on their hip, like a mirroring thing. Mm -hmm. And I think subconsciously I'm doing it so they're more comfortable. I'm not sure. But it's good to not be fidgety with your hands. Make eye contact. Don't be twirling all around in your chair. Mm -hmm. The physical part of conversation and listening is huge yeah i have a tendency like to talk with my hands a lot because mm -hmm. you'll see me like this on the show or put my hands down you know i yeah. get real fidgety i definitely you know. talk with my hands and that's just a thing yeah a lot of people do that i feel like just and, don't whack anyone when you're doing it yeah and the other thing is um make sure that you kind of it may be a good idea, like if you're going to be talking to a supervisor and you want your point across, kind of take notes, kind of like practice in a way. Make Prepare. sure that you don't you don't stutter your yeah. words. Don't get nervous. You, you want know? to be confident with what you're, the point you're trying to get across. I fully agree. And being prepared, going in, that's to that direct right. thing. You know, I'm not one to go in. And if I have a question... That's what I'm asking. A lot of leading up to and follow up. 
it tends to take you away from the point and you're not going to get as direct of an answer. Right. You know, so just make sure that um, you basically know what you're going to talk about, how you're going mm -hmm. to talk about, and just be confident in your approach. You know, you could even sit and talk to yourself in front of a mirror, which I've done quite a few a few times, yeah. you know, just to make sure, okay, am I leaning my head this way? <laughs> am I coming off too strong? Uh, yeah. You know, how am I going to hold my arms and stuff? I know that sounds silly, but if you sit and think about it, like if you, you hear your name over the intercom, you know, Drake, come, come to the supervisor's office I'm already, you know, you're walking <laughs> up there and you have all these scenarios playing over in mm -hmm. your mind. Am I in trouble? What did I do? Well, I know I didn't do this and I know I didn't do that. So just take a nice, slow, deep breath, listen to what they're saying. And then, you know, base your um, response on everything, you know, take in everything, make sure that you go in there with an open mind and your ears are open in order to listen because it could be a compliment. Yeah. Don't always go right to the negative. Oh, I'm getting called to the principal's office. What did I do today? Sometimes they just want to honor you for what you're doing well. Right. So, you know, so just make sure that you listen. And um, that was a good question. So if any of our other members have any um, questions that you would like for us to address, you know, reach out to us. And um, hopefully um, the person that sent this in is subscribed to CNA, CNA TV. TV. Yeah, so to make sure that you hear our response because we won't be posting it on Facebook. So make sure, <laughs> that, make sure that you check out CNA TV. Yeah, make sure to watch the video. Share, share, share. I can't say that enough. Mm -hmm. Get the word out about CNA TV. We will continually bring you knowledge, self-empowerment mm -hmm. stuff through our show and every other show that we have on CNA TV as well. We just want to grow our CNA industry and we're going to continue to do what we can on our end. So we want you to do what you can on your end and that's subscribe to our YouTube channel and get the word out to your friends, share it. Word of mouth is another good way. When you're sitting in the break room, pull it up. Hey guys, have you seen CNA TV? Just let people know. Right. That's good. And then uh, we'll find out exactly how good our listening, our members listening skills are. I agree. And see if they start putting money in that club account. Club account. And, yeah, checking out the TV. So any other thing you want to go over today? I don't think so. Okay. Listen, listen. And if you want someone to listen, you have to listen too. Right. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will see you next time. And until then, remember that you matter.